for pretty much an um, you know um, underdeveloped technology if i may say so michael you are right now facing supply and logistical issues i believe uh, you know for uh, for uh, an isotope a uh, hydrogen isotope like uh, tritium uh, you're also proposing to mine the moon there are people that do that um, so to differentiate tae is actually looking at fusing hydrogen and boron and, and those are both copious and, and universally available. Uh, there is there's no shortage of those. There's about 100,000 years of terrestrial supply on those. I will agree on tritium. Uh, we clearly are, um, that's a heavy form of hydrogen, right? And that's what actually the mainstream infusion research is pursuing. Uh, that is more handicapped and, and we have work to do there and on breeding that in the machines. Uh, this is not impossible, but something that will need more work to scale that up, right? Because you not only need to start the machine, but then it needs to breathe more of the tritium to operate on it. And then you're referencing the moon, and that's um, a, a third sort of lake to fusion, which is using um, helium-3. Again, not something we do, uh, but there are people who are looking at that, and if you want to burn that, then yes, the biggest deposits that mankind know of are, are on the surface of the moon. But I would imagine that that would just uh, take the uh, uh, investment going into this entire production process to the roof. That would, right. And that's why we're interested in hydrogen boron, right? Um, back to what TAE does. Uh, we are looking at a commodity product. Where is, where, where, uh, is boron used today, for instance? That's in uh, detergent products. I always joke and say it's making power out of soapy water. Um, and so there is absolutely no shortage. In fact, we'd be using a lot less uh, boron and borates than would be used in the detergent industry, for instance, right? Even to make copious amounts of power. So there is really no shortage. Uh, it's a commodity product. It's incredibly inexpensive. There is no impact on the cost of the uh, production of the energy actually out of the fuel source, which is rather refreshing, right? There is no variability in costs that come in, which in gas, for instance, we all know can be substantial. And so it's amortizing equipment. And so once you bring equipment prices down, you're in a very economically attractive picture very quickly. And, and, and you don't have a lack, of, you have a lack of a waste stream or carbon emissions and those kinds of negative things. Right, but give, give me a timeline on when do you think uh, this source of power, this source of energy could become uh, more viable, accessible, uh, and uh, you know something that uh, that all of us will see go mainstream. Yeah, so I think, um, so technically we're almost there. I think scientifically and technically we know exactly what we need to do. Uh, for TAE, this is about a three to four year process now to build a device that can show that we can actually harvest more energy than we put in. So we think we will do this um, early second half of the 2020s. We think by the early 2030s, and, and uh, us and others would be in a position to actually build, as I say, the first prototype plant that you can connect to the grid and you get electrons. And this is very similar to, for instance, how the fishing industry started with a, a plant in the US called Peach Bottom. It was sort of the first fishing device that, that, that ran um, and in sort of into the grid. And then you're looking at the, late, at the later part, second half of the 30s, where you're really going to scale that. And now you're looking for supply chain development and mobilization of industrial base to really bring this out to global rollout. And so I would say we're, we're going to see the kindlings of the dawn of the fusion age late this decade, early in the 30s. And we'll see an expansion into the, into the utility sector in the, in the second half of the 30s. And, and somewhere in the 40s, uh, we would hopefully be in a position where we can contribute substantially to deployment of new plants and new facilities to generate power.